And today I'm helping to clean up the past in this park. I've got a sweeping brush and I'm using it to sweep up the leaves and dirt. But if we wanted to clean up lots of paths or streets, we'd need something much bigger and faster. Can you guess what it is? That's right. It's a road sweeper. Road sweepers are powerful machines that suck up dirt, leaves and litter to keep the streets clean. But do you know how a road sweeper works? Let's find out. How does it work? Road sweeper. To find out how a road sweeper works, I've come here to a road sweeper depot. You must never play or go close to a road sweeper, but I've been given special permission to show you how they work. This is Sam, and it's Sam's job to drive and operate the road sweeper. The road sweeper has two brushes. One, two. And I think all of these bristles look like pieces of spaghetti, don't you? And this part just here is a water jet. It squirts out water. Can you see it all working? OK, I should probably get out of the way. just there. That's called the suction tube and it's attached to this part. It's called the nozzle box. It's their job to suck up the dirt and litter. The dirt and litter goes through the nozzle box and all the way up the suction tube into the road sweeper. But how do all the different parts of the road sweeper work together to clean our streets? And where does all the dirt and litter go afterwards? To find out, I think we should take a closer look. Inside the road sweeper is a tank filled with water. When the driver presses the button, water is sprayed out of the jet to the front. This sticks the dirt and litter together, so it's easier to clean up. The driver presses another button to make the brushes spin around. Very quickly. One brush spins one way, and the other brush spins the other way. This is called counter-rotation. The driver uses two small joysticks to move the brushes up and down to help clean in small spaces. The road sweeper spins really fast, which sucks air into the suction nozzle, sucking the dirt and litter on the wheels. The dirt and litter travel up the suction nozzle and into the bin for a bottle. When the bottle is full, the driver presses a button and all the waste is tipped out, ready to be recycled. Should we see the road sweeper in action? To see all the different parts working together, I'm going to set up some of my special cameras. And today, I've got special permission to ride in the road sweeper with Sam. I've put one of my special cameras in the cab so you can see what happens when we're out and about. that beeping sound. That means it's time for the brushes and the water jets to lower down. Wow! The brushes are spinning round and round really fast and they're busy sweeping up all the leaves, moving them into the centre so it's easy for them to go up the nozzle box and through the suction pipe into the hopper at the back. And look, the water jets are spraying the leaves and getting them a little bit damp so it's easier for the brushes to sweep them up. 
was brilliant. Thank you so much, Sam. But the hopper at the back of the road sweeper is now full of dirt and leaves. And just like a rubbish bin, it needs to be emptied. To empty the hopper, first, Sam reverses the road sweeper towards the skip. Can you hear that alarm? That's the sound the road sweeper makes to warn everyone that it's reversing. Oh. The hopper is going from here, that's what we call horizontal, to here. This is what we call vertical. Now the hopper's empty, the road sweeper can head back out onto the roads and start again. What did you like most about finding out how a road sweeper works? Do you remember the name of the parts which squirt out water? That's right, they're called water jets. Did you hear the sound the road sweeper made as the brushes were lowered to the ground? Did you see my special camera when it showed us where the dirt goes inside the suction nozzle? So the next time you see a road sweeper out and about, you'll know how it works to suck up dirt and leaves and to keep our streets nice and clean. Can you think of anything else that sucks things up? Hmm. How about a vacuum cleaner? Or an elephant's trunk? we can use too when we have a drink. Do you know what it is? That's right, it's a paper straw. Paper straws are stiff, so they stand up and they have a hole that goes all the way through the middle so that water can get sucked up through them. Do you know how paper straws are made? Hmm. Let's find out. How is it made? like this. A paper straw factory! This factory makes three million paper straws every single day. That's so many straws that if you stack them on top of each other, they'd reach into space. There are lots of different types of paper straws. White ones, orange ones, green ones, stripy ones, but today the factory are making red and white paper straws. And they start out like this. Giant rolls of paper called mother reels. One reel weighs 800 kilograms. That's about the same as 10 kangaroos. But the mother reels are white and we need some colour. And this happens here at the printing machine. After the mother reels are cut to the right size, they're loaded onto the printing machine. The printing machine uses rubber rollers and ink to print stripes onto the white paper. And today, it's printing red stripes. Next, the stripey roll is loaded onto a slitting machine. The roll slitting machine cuts the roll of paper into lots of strips. Look, could you see the big rotating blade? It's like a giant pair of spinning scissors. The paper is being cut into thin strips called ribbons, and the ribbons are being wound onto smaller reels. This is a finished reel of ribbon. But we can't drink through it, can we? <whistles> to make paper straws, we need three reels of paper. Should we count them? One. They're nice and stiff. But what do you think we need to stick our three ribbons together? That's right, we need some glue. And that happens here at the gluing stand. This is the inside ribbon because it goes on the inside of the paper straw. This is the outer ribbon and it's got the colour on it. And it gets a thin layer of glue rolled onto one side. But what about the middle ribbon? It gets pulled through this pool of glue. 
and then any extra is scraped off by these rubber jaws. And now it's time for the fun part, the sticking. Have a look with one of my special cameras. So we can see the ribbon being stuck together on the mandrel. I'm going to film it in slow motion so we can watch it happening really slowly. Okay, camera set. Let's record. Can you see the ribbons being pulled onto the mandrel? The inner ribbon. The middle ribbon. The outer ribbon, which has been printed on underneath to give the straw a red stripe. The outer ribbon is glue on too, so the straw sticks together really tightly. But this straw is way too long to drink out of, so it goes inside a cutting machine. There are five blades inside the cutting machine, and each time they move forwards and back, they cut the big long straw into four short straws. You can suck up your drink. Can you hear the sound of the blades chopping the straws? It's a bit like a train, isn't it? <laughs> The straws have been cut, they are packaged into boxes. So there you have it, some finished red and white paper straws. And the best thing is, once you've finished using one of these to have a drink with, you can pop it in the recycling, ready for the paper to be used to make something else. I loved finding out how paper straws are made. What was your favourite bit? Remember how many holes of ribbon we need to make a straw? That's right. One, two, three. Did you hear the sound of the cutting machine made? And did you see the three ribbons on my special camera stuck together to make the straw? So the next time you use a paper straw, you'll know how it was made. And if you see a road sweeper out and about, you'll know how it works to suck up dirt and litter. I'll see you next time. There are lots of things.